Welcome back. In this video, we're going to define vectors. We're going to talk about equivalent vectors, and we're going to present the component form of vectors. Many quantities in geometry and physics, such as area, time, and temperature, can be represented by a single real number. Other quantities, such as force and velocity, things you might use in physics and that kind of thing, involve both magnitude and direction and they can't completely be characterized by a single real number. So to represent such a quantity, we'll use a directed line segment as shown here. And we are gonna call this a vector. This would be vector PQ with an initial point P and a terminal point Q. And you can see here the arrowhead indicating the kind of the direction of our vector. In order to have equivalent vectors, they must have the same magnitude and direction. So the set of all directed line segments that are equivalent to the given directed line segment is a vector in the plane written. So we've got this plane down here in sample one, and vectors are noted by lowercase and boldface letters such as U, V, and W, and that W here should be bold. So we want to show that these two vectors, u and v, are equivalent. So in order to have that, they, they must have the same magnitude, and they also must have the same direction. So how do we show that they have the same magnitude? Well, we're going to do that by using the distance formula and we'll find out essentially how long the vectors are. So the magnitude of vector u or pq, we would write with the, kind of the double kind of absolute value, vector, the magnitude of vector pq is equal to, and using our distance formula, the distance from 3 to 0, our change in x, so 3 minus 0 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared equals the square root of 9 plus 4, or the square root of 13. Whereas the magnitude of vector v, or rs, is equal to the square root of 4 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. So 3 squared plus 2 squared, and again, we get the square root of 13, so their magnitudes are equivalent. Now in order to show that they have the same direction, that we will use the slope. So we'll just find the slope of those, see that they have the same pitch or the same steepness. So the slope of PQ is simply our rise over our run or our change in Y over our change in X. So three, two minus zero over three minus zero, and we get two thirds, and our slope of vector rs is equal to 4 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. And again, we get 2 thirds. So these two vectors have the same magnitude and direction. And then our final objective here, the component form of a vector the directed line segment whose initial point is the origin is often the most convenient, so we will work with the origin. It's the most convenient representative of a set of equivalent directed line segments. This representative of the vector v is in standard position. So we like our vectors to, to work from the origin, and so we have this vector v and its component form, it's written as 
almost looks like an ordered pair v1, v2. Okay, so we've already done some of this. Um, we've done the magnitude and we've also done somewhat this this component form and we'll talk about this more but if we had two different points the the final vector would be the difference in our in our points q1 minus p1 and q q2 minus p2 it's kind of like working with ordered pairs so we'll show an example of, it, of that in just a minute and the magnitude or length is given by using the distance formula which we did already in our earlier sample okay a unit vector has a magnitude of 1. So unit vector, if you're thinking uh, a magnitude of 1, if you're thinking unit circle, that's good. You're on the right track there. So in sample 2, it says find the component form and magnitude of the vector v represented by the directed line segment that has an initial point for negative 7 and a terminal point. That point negative is one, negative 1, positive negative 5. five. So, we say these are, you know, two points A and B, vector AB would essentially be the vector denoted by negative 1 minus 4, 5 minus a minus 7. So negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, negative 5, or 5 minus a minus 7 is 12, Negative 5, 12 is our component form. And then to find the magnitude of V, so that's what that double brackets are again, the magnitude of V is simply using our distance formula. Now we've got our component form, so we've already done our subtraction, our change in our x's, negative 1 to 4, negative 5 squared, plus and our change in our y coordinates is 12 so really I can steal that from my component form and we get the square root of 169 which is 13 and if you see a 5 12 13 right triangle there that's excellent you are in good shape and we'll get some more practice with vectors and I'll see you in class